Hello everybody, Chef Bob here today. I'm going to show you how to make a complete meal in a small portable rice cooker. We're going to make homemade meatloaf, we're going to make brown rice with vegetables, and then we're going to make a cake for dessert. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to start off with today is we're going to make brown rice and vegetables. Now, I'm using a portable three cup rice cooker. Uh, they're made by a lot of different manufacturers and they come in a variety of sizes. I believe this is a three cup size cooker. Um, this model is Wolfgang Puck. But there's many different brands and sizes, but they're all going to operate the same way. Some call them rice cookers, some call them portable cookers. And they're usually just one simple button. Now a lot of these, everything I'm making today, you could make by other means and you could also use a electric pre an electric pressure cooker but put in the, uh, with the pressure off, sort of in the steam vented mode. You could cook all of these meals. But I'm going to show you how to use simple one button style rice cooker, portable cookers to make a nice little meal. Say, you know, it's just uh, a teenager or a single parent, whatever. You don't want to make a big meal. You don't want to use the big guns, the big tools. So we're going to show you how to use a small rice cooker to make three different meals. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the brown rice and vegetables. I have one cup of a short grain brown rice. I have a half cup of a frozen mixed vegetables. I have just a small pat of butter. This might be about a tablespoon. And I'm going to use one cup of bone broth. I believe this is some turkey bone broth that I made. I have a separate video on how to make bone broth if you'd like to go and check that out. So what I'm going to do first as we're going to put, as you see this, this has a removable non-stick insert on this model. So I'm just going to put in the butter first. I always like to put some type of butter or oil in first when I'm using a device like this. Just to prevent, even though it is non-stick, I want to prevent any type of uh, sticking to the bottom. So I just put that in there. Now I'm going to add the one cup of short grain brown rice. And now I'm going to add, I'll add the broth next. The bone broth, one cup of bone broth. I believe this is turkey bone broth. Okay. And now I'll add the half cup of frozen veggies. I could probably add a whole cup, but we'll go with a half cup. Now all I need to do is on this model just put the lid on. And this one has two little clamps. And it's one button. And again, that's why I want to show you how to use this because it's it's a lot simpler. Um, because you don't have to worry about even setting minutes on an electric pressure cooker. You may have to set the pressure and the time. This is even simpler. You just click the one button and it goes. So what's going to happen is I'll bring you back when this is done. I'll time it and let you know how long it takes. And uh, we'll be back and try it out. And then after that we're going to go to the homemade meatloaf and then we're going to make some cake. See you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. I looked at my timer and it clicked over to warm mode at 48 minutes. I was listening to it around the 40 minute mark and it sounded like most of the water had been absorbed at that point in time but it took an extra eight minutes for it to to finish so let's take a look and see what we have now this is going to be very hot and I don't know if you can see on the camera but there's still steam coming out so I'm going to put my uh, silicone mitt on unhook it you can see all the steam and let's get the platter over here. We'll see what this looks like. Give it a little stir. Get a little bit of crust on the bottom, which is normal. Let me actually switch mitts here. I want to get the rest of this out with the spatula. There we go. If you can see in the camera, none of it stuck. So it was non-stick. And you see there was a little bit of the, uh, the nice caramelized rice from the bottom there, or the butter. But here it is. Now, it looks like maybe I only put a half cup of uh, vegetables in. And if I stir it up a little bit here, 
You probably it would have held a, a whole cup of uh, frozen vegetables in there. But I just put a half cup in. So let's give this a quick little taste just to see how it turned out. And then we'll go on to the next course, which will be the homemade meatloaf. It's going to be hot. Hmm. The rice is perfect. It's not crunchy. It's not too soft. So it's perfect rice. So let me quickly wipe this out, and then we'll get started on course number two of the meatloaf. Now. The reason I made the rice first is I knew it would take longer for the rice. The meatloaf should be quicker. I know roughly how long it'll take for the cake. So, um, you know, if you were doing this at home, doing a whole meal like this with just one. Now, if you have multiple cookers, obviously you could do all three at the same time. But I'm just showing you how, if you have one, how to make a, a meal for yourself. So come home, maybe from work or, or doing some chores. First thing you do is get your rice going. One cup of rice, one cup of broth and one half to a full cup of frozen vegetables, put it in there, hit the button, and it took 48 minutes to be completed and it switched over to warm mode. So if you're not here, that's okay, it just switches to warm, it's safe. So I was here and I took it out right away to show you. So let me clean this up and we'll get started on the second meal, or the second part of the meal, which will be the homemade meatloaf. Okay, I'm back, now we're gonna make the second part of the meal, which will be the homemade meatloaf. And again, I'm going from you know the the idea where you want something very simple quick easy to do so what I'm going to start with is I have a quarter pound a hamburger patty which you'd buy pre-made at your supermarket or your local butcher uh, something that's quick and easy you can just have a thought you know have a thought in the fridge and I'm going to use so I'm going to use a quarter pound uh, ground beef patty I have a piece of onion I'm going to chop up right now and I also have, I had butter here, but I think I'm going to put a little bit of coconut oil in here. As I mentioned, I always like to at least coat the, uh, the container, the nonstick container with something. And then I'm going to add some salt, pepper, parsley, and some ketchup. So let me get started um, with chopping the onion. I'm actually going to put these gloves on because I'm going to be handling the onion and then the beef. And it's just uh, a little less messy this way for me. And also the onion. Keep the onion smell off of me. So I just have a small piece of onion, as you can see, and I'm just gonna do a just a you know a rough little chop with it. Nothing fancy. So it's gonna be a very simple meatloaf, as you can see. Just something that you want to do quick, easy, you don't want to spend a lot of time making. So I'm going to put in this a little bowl. We'll just mix it all together. So I have the ground beef patty. Just break it up a little bit first. Now I'm going to throw in the onion. This might be a little bit much, but that's okay. I like onion. If you don't like onion, put less or none at all. You can put garlic in there if you wanted, whatever you want to do. Now in here I have some salt, pepper, and parsley. I, I don't know. Um, put as much as you normally would like. If you're trying to cut back on salt, don't put much. I have maybe a quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and about a quarter teaspoon of parsley. That's all. Might be a little bit much for this little bit of meat, but that's okay. You can always experiment at home. Add or subtract. Add some Worcestershire sauce. You can actually use two ground beef patties if you wanted to, if you wanted a bigger meal. But again, I'm showing just a really quick, uh, simple meal for maybe one, one uh, adult or one teenager. So now what I'm going to do is, put this over here. What I want to show you is a little trick. Let me take these off temporarily here. And to help get things out uh, that you make in here. For example, this meatloaf, I don't want to dump it out. I'm going to try to, to lift it out. So what you can do is you can take a piece of aluminum foil like this. And then just roll it over a couple of times. See this? I'm just going to roll it once on the edge. You can see like that. And then again. If you can see that. And then I'm just going to roll it over one more time. To make a to make a strip like a handle and then I'm going to put the handle in here and I'm going to put the other one in and crisscross 
and I'll show you in a second what this looks like. Now this pan is still warm from the rice. All I did was wipe it out with a wet towel. And I'm going to show you. So if you do something like this, it will enable you to pull things out. We may do the same thing for the cake, I'm not sure. But for the meal, if this will help us to pull it out, if you don't want to flop things out, like the rice has flopped out, this will help you to lift things out. So now, we're just going to put our uh, meatloaf in here and try to form a little ball with it. You could even add some egg in here if you wanted to, if you had a problem with it sticking together or if you were using leaner meat. Again, however you like to make your meatloaf, I just want to make something quick and easy to give you an example of what you can do with this. So I just have, you see, I just put it into a ball. And now I'm just going to put it in here and squish it out just a little bit. just so it fills the bottom of the container. And I'll show you what that looks like. See, I just I just squished it out. So you have a little mini meatloaf. Now what I'm gonna do is on top of that, I'm just gonna put some ordinary ketchup on top. That's a real common uh, topping for meatloaf. So I'm just gonna put all this on top. Now tuck these handles inside, put on our lid, hit the button, and I'll time it again and let you know how long it takes for the meatloaf. And there we go. So I'll be back here when it's done. Okay, I'm back, and I timed it for the meatloaf, and it took approximately just a little under 19 minutes. So and that was from the time... I loaded it up and pushed the button until right now, 19 minutes. You can see it's still steaming. Maybe you should be able to pick it up on the camera, a little bit of steam. This is going to be hot. If you remember, I uh, used the little handles. Now, I said I was going to put some oil in the pan, if you caught that, and I didn't. And that's because I used the handles. With meats, uh, it's not that critical because the ground beef would render off some fat and won't stick. But definitely when you're going to make things like rice or the cake that I'm going to make, I would definitely recommend putting a little butter or oil in the container before you start. So. Whoa. <laughs> Smells very good. Now let's see. I'm going to be a little awkward with the gloves. So I'm going to try to do this with my fingers and lift this out. I don't want it to be too messy. Let's see what I can do here. There we go. Put those over here. And there you have it. A nice little mini meatloaf made in 19 minutes. And what I'll do is I'll cut this in half here. It's, oh, the ketchup ran down, but it, it's totally cooked. It's totally done. Seems to be very tender and moist. And if you want, you can also, this is going to be hot, but I'll see. You could pour some of this over top if you wanted. Ow, it's very hot. Some additional juice with that. Now let me grab a fork and give that a little taste. It's very hot. Oh, very, very hot. As you can see, you can see from the, uh, from the steam. Mmm. It's perfect. That's a perfect little mini meatloaf. So what we've done is we've created the vegetables and rice. Now we've created the mini homemade meatloaf. And now, in a minute or two, I'm going to mix up the cake and show you how to make a little a mini cake or two for dessert. So I'll be right back. Let me clean this up, get the mixer over here, and we'll get started on the cake for dessert. Okay, now it's time for dessert. We have our rice. We have our meatloaf. Uh, now, what I have here is, I have, I opened up just a standard cake mix that you would buy at the store. Again, this meal is about convenience. We're not looking to make everything from scratch. It's how can you make a very quick and convenient meal. Um, so what happens is, right now I'm just going to put all of the dry cake mix in there. Now this cake mix called for 
uh, half cup of oil, one cup of water, and three eggs. So I'm just going to start adding the rest of the ingredients. This is just an egg cracker, just makes it easy. Helps prevent from getting eggshells in there if you're one who has trouble keeping the eggshells out. Makes it easier. So there's three eggs, now we add a cup of water. And half a cup of oil. On our beater. Lock it down. On our guard, splatter guard, and let her go. So I'm going to let this mix for about two minutes or so, maybe two or three minutes. And I'll clean this up, come back, and we'll start loading it into the uh, rice cooker. And I'll show you how much to put in there, and we'll finish off the meal with a great dessert. Okay, I finished mixing it cleaned it up and I put it in this measuring cup to show you quantity wise uh, when you're cooking with something like this so that was a standard sized cake mix that you could buy at any store and as you see when it was complete it made 32 ounces of batter so what I want to do is I want to put 8 ounces of batter in here I want to put in one cup so that means you'll get four of these little mini cakes uh, out of one one box so what you could do is you could make this and then you know, put the rest in your refrigerator, put it in a sealed container, and that way you can make, you know, make it during the week, well, days during the week you can make one, or you can make them all at one time, but you don't have to make them, you don't have to make it all up at once. You can make this mix, and then just store it in the container, and use it tomorrow or the next day. And uh, so now what I'm going to do, I've wiped this out, it's still warm from the meatloaf, hot, and now I am going to lightly coat it. I just always like to do this, it is a non-stick container, I'm just using... Um, there's coconut oil in here. It's solidified because it's a little cool in here. At 70 degrees, it, it turns into a solid coconut oil does. So I'm just, and I'm using a basting brush, a pastry brush. And I'm just lightly, so you can see it's very little. It's just, it's just a light coating. That's all I like to do. And I also like to do that with my non-stick pans, just the lightest coating. Now, what I'm going to do is just pour this 8 ounces of batter in here. Try not to make a mess. Okay. Add a little bit on the edge, get that off. Put our lid on. Clamp it down. Hit the button. And again, just like it did before, I'll time this and let you know how long it takes. There we go. I'll see you here when it's done. Okay, our dessert's done. It's been in here for about 25 minutes now. I will let you know with this particular rice cooker, I turned it on and about three to four minutes later, it was around three and a half minutes maybe, it turned from cook to warming mode. Now why did it do that? It's because the cake was retaining the temperature. So when it goes to warm mode, it's still cooking. It was maintaining enough temperature, it didn't need to be in the full cook mode. So what I had to do was I just timed it for about 20 to 25 minutes because I knew that's how long it would take. I've used other rice cookers, maybe I'll make some other videos, where it will stay on the full cook mode. Those tend to be the larger cookers and they will need to, to keep running to keep the heat. But since this is a smaller unit, it's a little more efficient. So again, just to let you know, it went from cook to keep warm at four minutes. The cake wasn't finished baking, just to let you know that. You would still need to leave it cook and I was timing it so I knew that it would take about 20 to 25 minutes. So now I'm talking to you, it's been 26 minutes. So let's open it up and take a look. And I'll show you right now before I take it out. It's, it's perfectly cooked. And I'll try to dump it out and this container is gonna be hot. Now again, if you wanted to, you could make the foil strips like I did before and put those in to lift it out. I'm gonna try to dump this out. We'll see if I'm successful. Again, it was eight ounces of cake batter. And let me remind you one more time, it shut off from cooking to warm at four minutes. But it was still cooking. I left it in for 26 minutes. I'm shaking it a little bit to make sure it breaks free. And now... There we go. 
So it came out clean. I remember I did coat that with uh, the pastry brush with coconut oil when I started. So there's our little mini cake, and now it's too hot to put icing on it. It would just it would just melt. So normally you'd have to let that cool to ice. So what I'm, what I'm to put icing on. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do something different for this video. We'll see how it works out. Again, don't be afraid to experiment when you're cooking at home. I have some strawberry preserves. So I'm just going to put some strawberry preserves on top. This was a yellow uh, box cake. It's you know, like a vanilla flavor. And I'm just going to put strawberry preserves on top. And that'll just start to melt and ooze all over. And to that, I'm going to put some whipped cream on top of that. Okay. Now, I think I better try some. Oh, 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 oh. oh boy. You can see this is very hot. Mmm, mmm, it's very good. As you can see, it's perfectly baked. So, there you have it. If you have received one of these as a gift for the holidays, or you gave one, or you're thinking of buying one, I just showed you how to make, you know, instead of just ordinary, don't think of it as just a plain white rice cooker. We made brown rice with vegetables, we made a homemade meatloaf, and we made a yellow cake with some strawberry preserves and whipped cream. So we made a full meal. It took about 45 minutes for the rice and veggies. And that was dried rice. It wasn't a pre-cooked rice. It was totally dried brown grain, uh, brown short grain rice, frozen veggies. Homemade meatloaf using a quarter pound ground beef patty. And we added some onions, some spices, and ketchup for the sauce. And then we used eight ounces of cake batter. We saved the rest for later. Eight ounces of cake batter. And that took about, what did I say, 25 minutes I timed it. So 45, uh, roughly what, 20, 25. We have a complete meal. Not a lot of pots and pans. We never turned on the stove or the oven. All we used is one little device and we made a whole meal. And there's easily enough here for two people easily. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I encourage you to uh, try something like this. If you purchase one of these cookers, don't be free to experiment. Try your own meals. Uh, like I've done here, different things. And I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you liked it, please press the like, subscribe, thumbs up buttons, subscribe to my channel, and put some comments below. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Would you like me to make some more uh, recipes and a rice cooker like this? Would you like pressure cooker videos, air fryer videos? Let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll try to get those done as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching. Have a happy holidays. I'm going to eat. Mm-mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This, this.